Hi, and welcome to Oregon's Outback. Today, you're gonna to learn the step-by-step -step process on how to photo monitor. This is gonna encompass all three areas of sustainable rangeland-based beef production. That is, practices that are environmentally responsible, economically viable, and socially diligent. Dustin, would you take us through the process on how to rangeland monitor? Sure, Sergio. Um... I'd be happy to do that. First, I just want to talk just a little bit about rangeland monitor monitoring. So rangeland monitoring is documenting or measuring how conditions of your land and or vegetation are changing in response to the environment and the management that you're applying. And then periodically evaluating the change in those conditions relative to your management objectives. And in addition, and just as importantly, monitoring is also a tool that can be used to understand what changes might be needed in your management program to make sure that you're making progress in meeting those management objectives. So Dustin, is rangeland monitoring complicated? No, not at all. Rangeland monitoring does not have to be complicated. In fact, periodically taking photos in a consistent manner of the same locations at the same time of year can serve as a highly effective monitoring program. Now there are many ways of conducting photo monitoring and I plan to show you just one of those methods today that I find simple and highly repeatable. Before establishing a long-term photo monitoring point, gather all the equipment you'll need to document the site and to collect the photos. Your equipment list should include a digital or film camera, a cell phone can also work in a pinch, a photo board, rebar or galvanized landscape spikes to permanently mark the photo plot, a hammer, paper or notebook, and pencil for taking field notes about the site, a set of six-foot carpenter rules, and a GPS and or map to mark the location of the photo point. So once you've selected a site to photo monitor, the next step is to permanently establish the photo point. The method of photo monitoring that I'll be demonstrating involves two photos at each site. So you'll establish a three by three foot photo plot with your two six-foot carpenter rules. The ground photo plot serves two purposes. First, it shows a close-up of the vegetation you are managing and provides detailed documentation of how that vegetation changes over time when you re revisit the site to take photos in the future. Therefore, it is important to place the 3 by 3 foot photo plot so that it shows the key plant species that are relevant to your management objectives. For example, on this site, I would likely have, as at least part of my management objective, something about maintaining the abundance and production of my large, deep-rooted perennial bunch grasses, such as the blue bunch wheatgrass that we see here. Therefore, I would want to include some blue bunch wheatgrass plants in my 3 by 3 foot photo plot so that I will have detailed documentation of how the abundance of these important grass plants might be changing over time. Once you have your carpenter rules placed where you'd like them, mark the two diagonal corners with either rebar stakes or landscape spikes that will help you place the plot in the exact same place in, this, in the future. The second purpose of the 3 by 3 foot ground photo plot is to serve as a place to stand when taking the landscape photo. Therefore, while I'm down here, I also like to mark where to stand when taking both the ground photo and the landscape photo. It is important to mark this location on the north side of the plot if possible to prevent casting a shadow in your photos. Next, fill out your photo board with the location, pasture name, date, and GPS coordinates if possible. Place the photo board so that it will appear in the ground photo. Now move the photo board so that it will appear in the landscape photo. When taking the landscape photo, it is important to orient the photo so that a permanent reference point appears, preferably in the center of the photo's background. This reference point will greatly aid framing the photos consistently over time. Select a photo point that is truly permanent, such as a rock formation, mountain peak, or other permanent landscape feature, and describe the reference point in your site notes. And as tempting as it may be, try to avoid selecting reference points that are less persistent, such as trees. To create consistent landscape photos, try setting the camera on top of a 5-foot PVC pipe that is an inch in diameter. It will provide for easier comparisons in later years especially if different individuals will be taking landscape photos over time. Now take your landscape photo, and one quarter of the photo should be sky and three quarters of the photo should be landscape. For future repeat landscape photos, I found it handy to bring along photos from the previous years so that I can refer to them when trying to frame up the current photo. 
Again, photo monitoring is simple and highly repeatable. The only trick to it is remaining as consistent as possible in how and when you take the photos. If you have a GPS unit, collect the coordinates of the 3x3 foot ground photo plot. Even better would be to collect a waypoint at the plot and name it with the site location so that it can be placed on a map later. Lastly, take notes about the site and the conditions you observed while monitoring. Notes can include details on the specific location where the photo was taken, the weather that had occurred that year, information about grazing, presence of weeds on the site, wildlife use, evidence of fire, and any other relevant observations you make on the site. Remember, the more notes you take, the more complete the story you'll have about how and why things are changing on your rangeland. So now that you've taken your photos and field notes on this site, it will be important for you to keep all this information secure and organized so that you can easily locate it and evaluate it when you need it in the future. Therefore, when you get back home, download or print your photos and type up or scan your field notes on your computer and organize your field notes, photos, and other information in a notebook while everything is still fresh in your mind. Keeping both electronic and hard copies of your monitoring information is a good practice. In addition, the notebook, depending on its size, can easily be taken to the field when monitoring sites in the future. There are many ways to monitor rangeland. I've only shown one method of photo monitoring in this segment that I found to be easy to undertake, highly repeatable, and meaningful for helping me to understand if I'm making progress in meeting my management objectives. The bottom line is, no matter what type of monitoring method is selected, the best type of monitoring is the one that gets done and the one that is used to determine the effectiveness of your management. Therefore, it is important to select a monitoring program that you can accomplish and commit to using to support your management decisions. Thank you, Dustin. If you have any questions on how to photo monitor, please contact your local extension agent. Until then, we'll see you on Oregon's Outback.